So why do Jewish women wear wigs? Hi, welcome back to our channel. Today's just me because I'm gonna take you to a wig store where you will not find a religious Jewish male. So we are going to see how orthodox, how religious Jewish women go wig shopping and why in the world do we wear wigs? It seems so ludicrous that I am wearing someone else's hair over my own hair. Like if I could wear hair, what in the world is the difference? Why do we wear a wig after marriage? Like what is happening? So join me, This um, I'm gonna take you wig shopping to the streets of New York where I was, now I'm in Sweden. <laughs> but join me and let's go. I'm here with my sister-in-law Chava in the heart of Brooklyn, New York and we are going wig shopping. I'm going to show you how orthodox Jewish women shop for wigs. Join us while you're at it. Subscribe, follow, like, and here we are. At Milano Collection. How are you? Great, how are you? Good, thanks. It's rolling. <laughs> nice to meet Welcome you. To Milano. It's a pleasure thank to meet you. you. I'm Nicole, I'm the manager here. This Come is, I think you can see as you walk in, that there are wigs literally everywhere of every color, every shape, every texture, every length. Crazy. I know it looks like we both have the same wigs, we both have brown hair, but <laughs> <laughs> each wig is its own Hi. literal ball game. Hi, good morning. How are you? Hey. What do I look down and see? They're friends. This is as my good friend are. from back in high school. So I'm gonna show you step by step how women go shopping for wigs. Like you walk in, what do we do? So Chaya, who'll be back in a moment, is gonna show us the exact process. Get excited from, from beginning to end. Check this out. They have a full. How many drawers do you have filled this week? No, this is what. <laughs> this is what's behind the scenes. Our <laughs> draw. They have drawers and drawers and drawers of wigs, oh. shelves of wigs. So that's Sandy over there. She's a colorist and she does amazing work. So she can color your wig to look like whatever you want. Did she color your wig? What she was did. your What was your wig originally? Mine was dark. Like this. Um, not that. It was this. She can do it for you. And now look at her. Now look at the hair color. Wig shopping is fun. It's actually so exciting because it's your look and you get to choose. Sometimes it's even prettier than your hair. So why do Jewish women wear wigs? The concept kind of sounds a little funny. Doesn't doesn't sound so right. Now I'm gonna try them on. So. Now, while you're getting a vibe of how wig shopping happens, why do we wear wigs? So the first thing to understand is this. To cover our hair after marriage is a mitzvah, a commandment in the Torah. And the Torah, when God created this world, imagine God as like an architecture. An architect plans out the building, every single detail of it, every structure that's needed. And when God created this world, he created like an architect, like a blueprint for this world. So for Jews, that is the Torah. For non-Jews, the seven Noahide laws. And there are things that we do in this world that keep this world running, that keep this world going, and that God wants us to fulfill. So that is what a mitzvah is. Now there are mitzvot that we technically would have, may have thought about it on our own. They are so logical. For example, not to steal. Morally, it's something we human beings understand and logically would see that as something not to do. And then there are mitzvot that we don't completely comprehend. We are human beings with finite minds. Those mitzvot are called chokim. They are laws that we do out of pure love for God, and we do it because that is what God wanted from us. So wearing a wig after marriage is falls under that category. We can never fully know why God wanted us to wear a wig after marriage. God just said, when a woman gets married, she must cover her hair. However, there are reasons and explanations that give it a lot of beauty and meaning for when we do it. While they are not the full reason why we cover our hair, it gives meaning to why we cover our hair. So this time we'll have like a few different options. Wow, amazing. Right, we have option A. We're trying to see which style I should go for. Okay, so we need to see. The color is unbelievable. So this type of wig is called a lace front. So you see my wig looks very different to the one I'm wearing now. How you can tell that. Do you want to tell us about this? Do you want to tell us about lace top? So this one's a lace top wig. It's not a silk top like a silk top. Silk top has like this Lace up is just a lace and we add the hair into it so it looks more like it's from your head out of your head. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. Guys, look at this option. I try on one and I'm already like loving it. 
Wig shopping is so fun. This is not my hair. This is a wig. You get it. Wow. Crazy. All right, we're going to try and do more. Unbelievable. Does it look very lacy? No. Well, That's we it. could bleach the knots. Can you? So this is made out of lace. So with time, if this is bleached, with if with time, it'll oxidize. So I'll just re-bleach it for you. No, we will no. tone it. Tone it. Sorry. <laughs> we will tone it. We will tone it. So what's the process of this? this so is... We're applying the makeup to make it look even more natural. So like this, we wouldn't have to bleach the knots. So it really depends on the person if you want to or not. But this just makes it. Of tips and tricks. This just gives it like an extra like look. Oh my See God. that? Crazy. This is more. Look at it. It's for your head. It's amazing. Judaism do not believe in covering your hair to look unattractive or to not look as good or just to look good for your husband and not look good for the rest of the world. That's not Judaism's reason or approach to covering our hair, which is why you have tons of beautiful different wigs. So you have one that fits everybody. We have these like different blonde ones. You have curly, you have straight, long, short. So everybody could feel beautiful the way that they should feel. Women should feel beautiful and beauty is so important in Judaism. So that is why we wear a wig. I need to see, there's not like a twist to like the lace. Now you guys will see why I never dyed my hair blonde. Rizal just went blonde. Disaster. Oh my god. You know who you look like. Should I go blonde? What do you think? Oh my god, who do you look like? Like a Barbie doll. <laughs> oh no? my god. I would never do it. Sorry, I would never do it. <laughs> This is how we go wig shopping. We try and roll out until we find the perfect one. Let me know in the comments, blonde or brunette? Like a... There is actually different type of hairs. You could get processed hair. This is a processed wig. You could get complete virgin hair, which has never been touched. That is like this original wig that I tried on. It's called virgin hair. And we have another hair, this, which is a little more curly. We'll try it on to see, I think. This is another option. I'm looking color-wise. If I would I do a darker that. base to match my eyebrows and then have a little bit of color going through, like balayage. That actually looks really good. There's something to it, no? Kaya. Kaya can pull up. What looks more striking? Oh, well, let's check Kaya out. No, it's so oh, heavy. Wow. Super heavy. I know people wear this. This is a wig with a lot more volume. It's not a lace I personally need flatness. For, is this filming? I personally need like flat, but you could get a wig with like. It looks good on you. Crazy. It's mad though, but so you can totally... Heavy. It's insane. If you're into having like more in the front, so you can have a wig like this. Can I show us what Milano has to offer? So look, this is not a lace top. It just has a lace front, so the front will look like it's coming out of your head. But the rest of it is super heavy and full. So if a person wants a full wig, they should definitely do not the lace top. And look how like, look how much volume that wig has. So there is so many options. Everybody comes in here. Once you find the wig that fits your head, they size it for you. They brush it out and style it for you. They cut it for you and dye it for you and make it literally perfect for your head. The, from beginning to end and you could always bring it back, get it re-dyed, get it recolored, get it re-cut. It's kind of fun. So we're here just quickly trying on a bunch more wigs. Check out this mess, this royal mess. Is I think I might get this wig. What do you think? Comment in the comments below. This just feels so natural. Look at this. It looks like my hair. It feels so light. I don't know, I think I might get this. Danny. <laughs> So when it comes to covering a woman's hair, Kabbalah comes to explain that in this world, there is something called good energies and negative energies. Just like weeds in your garden, you don't plant, you don't water your weeds for it to grow. The weeds like feed off the water that you give your roses to grow, right? So the negative forces in this world feed off holy energy in order to thrive. A human being's body is really holy and these negative forces aren't able to feed off something that is super, super holy. But a human being's hair, being that it is not connected to the brain, it doesn't have any nerve endings. That's why when you feel your hair, you touch your hair, you cut it, it doesn't hurt because it's not connected to nerves. So a human being's hair is a little less alive. So it's a little less holy. So the clipart, these negative energies, attach itself to the hair and that's how they get the energy. The hair is still holy, but it's less. 
so they get their energy from it. This is all mysticism. Kabbalah is the deeper layer of the Torah, so it's a lot more spiritual terminology. So these negative forces choose to get their energy off the male's hair rather than the female, because male and female come from two different sources. A female comes from the source of someone who receives, and a male comes from a source of giving. So these negative forces like going to the male because males give. They could give this this energy to them. However, when a woman gets married, her and her husband's body become one. Not only their soul becomes one, but their body becomes one. And now these negative forces get to choose who am I going to take from, the men or the female? And they choose the female because the female is from a higher source. So that is why a woman only covers her hair after she's married. This is extremely Kabbalistic and extremely mystical and it's a little hard for us to fully understand it. And this is only like a speck, the real reason we don't know. And we cover our hair because we love God and we do this because we know that God created this world and, we, and God gave us the Torah. And if we start picking and choosing about what to do in the Torah, about what makes sense to us or not, then we still wouldn't be here today. What kept the Jews tight and what keeps the Torah strong is the fact that there's, there's no picking and choosing, you know, like we do everything, even if it doesn't necessarily make 100% sense to our human mind, because God is so much greater than us. He's like that architect who knows why each beam is in the place that it is. It's really quite humbling to be living a life where things are not only for you and what I understand, what makes sense to me, but living for something so much greater and connecting to God in a much greater way than just what our brains could get. If that makes sense. So this is the first wig that I tried on and they always say first first time's a charm, no? First time is a charm because it's been my favorite from all the ones I tried on. I was really actually really hoping. I told Chava on the way here, I was like, I just hope I find something I like to like buy and I'm so grateful that I did. I love it. It's light. It's like my natural hair, easy, light. So what do you think? Do you think it's an upgrade? What do you say? Check this out. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. And I hope you enjoyed seeing how we go wig shopping. This wig, I purchased it in the end, as you could see, <laughs> from Milano in Brooklyn. They actually, I asked them for a code for myself and you guys, if you would like to buy a Milano wig. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the description. It states in many places in the Talmud that a lot of blessings come to her and her family if she covers her hair. I would like to thank Razel for wearing her wig, <laughs> for covering her hair, for bringing on blessings to our, our family. That's very sweet. <laughs> oh, my arm, by the way, in case in case you were wondering, I burnt it, the whole thing, with the hot kettle water. Like, literally, the whole arm. But thank God it's doing much better. Subscribe! Zug. Subscribe! Subscribe. <laughs>